Okay, kind of got a little caught up on that one. <laughs> okay, it's time now for Command Your Morning Prayer Line, live from the Upper Ministries Incorporated, located at 702 R.C. Davis Parkway in Waycross, Georgia. Well, the pastor is Pastor Samuel Sellers and Evangelist Dr. Renee Sellers. Comes your way every Friday morning at 11.15 a.m. until 11.30. We're a little late getting her on today, but she will have her entire time here on WHLJ this morning. Okay, let's go live now to Waycross, Georgia's Upper Room Ministries, located at 702 Austin Davis Parkway for this morning's radio broadcast, an inspirational word from Evangelist Renee Sellers. That's Evangelist Dr. Renee Sellers. It's coming up here right now. On WHLJ. Come on, y'all. Join Evangelist Renee Sellers every Friday morning at 11.15 a.m. to 11.30 a.m. with Faith in It Friday Inspirations. This program will lift your spirit and motivate you to reach your spiritual growth that God has for you and others. Please join Evangelist Renee Sellers every Friday right here on WHLJ 97.5 FM. Simulcasting with WHLJ AM 1400, Moultrie, Georgia. Welcome, Moultrie, Berlin, Doron, Hamasu, and all of the towns in between. You, you are listening to WHLJ 97.5 FM. Simulcasting with WHLJ AM 1400, Moultrie, Georgia. Good morning, everybody. This is Evangelist Renee Sellers of the Upper Room Outreach Ministries in Waycross, Georgia, and we are thankful to be able to come to you for this Faith in It Friday inspiration. My subject this morning is when the hurt helps when the hurt helps from first samuel chapter 1 verse 6 verses 9 through 18 verse 6 verses 9 through 16 uh it says and her adversary also provoked her for to make her fret because the lord had shut up her womb so hannah rose up after they had eaten in shadow and after they had drunk now eli the priest sat upon a seat by a post of the temple of the Lord, and she was in bitterness of soul, and prayed unto the Lord, and wept sore. And she vowed a vow, and said, O Lord of hosts, if thou wilt indeed look on the affliction of thine handmaid, and remember me, and not forget thine handmaid, but wilt give unto thine handmaid a man-child, then I will give him unto the Lord all the days of his life, and there shall no razor come upon his head. There shall no razor come upon his head. And I'm going to go down to verse 15. And Hannah answered and said, No, Lord, I am a woman of sorrowful spirit. He's accused her, Eli, of being drunk. I have drunk neither wine nor strong drink, but I have poured my heart heart i have poured out my soul before the lord she says i have poured out my soul before the lord when the hurt helps this morning today i want to encourage those that are listening uh, who have experienced rejection and ridicule i want to encourage you today not to let what they did to you define you i want to remind uh you of a as a story as i talked about the other day of a former prostitute who was discouraged because she was Saved, but now she was it had relationship issues because of her past. She was saved, the former prostitute, but had relationship issues because of her past. I told this woman that prostitution is what she did. That's not who she was. And you may have been the, the meanest person in your family, and the people stayed away from you because they didn't like your attitude. But today I want to encourage you that you may have been what they that way back then, but that does not define who you are as a child of God. If you've ever been abused or mistreated, reject that this message is for you. If you have been lied on, cheated, and talked about, this message today is for you. If you have ever been made to feel less than a man or less than a woman, uh, this message is for you. If anybody ever tried to make you feel like a failure, this Faith in a Friday message is for you. I want to encourage you today that what happened to you, how they treated you, and what they said about you is not about the critics. It's not about what they said or did. It's about your response response to what they did. Come on, somebody. It's about your response to your critics. This man by the name of Elkanah had two wives. One name was Hannah and the other was Penina. Penina had children, but Hannah did not. Well, Elkanah would go to Shiloh to worship and offer sacrifices to the Lord. And on the days that he offered the sacrifices, he would give portions to, of the meat to Penina, 
and each of his children. But to Hannah, even though the Bible says he loved her, he would give her a double portion because the Lord had shut up her womb. The Bible calls Panana, her adversary. Uh, the King James Version of verse 6 says that her adversary also provoked her sore. In other words, her adversary, Panina, uh, picked on her and made fun of her because the Lord had kept her from having children. Uh, Panina was a source of frustration. Uh, for Hannah. Uh, now, in the prayer line, we talked about the different names for Satan, and one of his names was adversary. And we need to understand today that Penina, being her adversary, was operating in the wrong spirit. She had the wrong spirit that was influencing how she talked and treated Hannah. Sometimes we have to recognize that the person that's fighting us is really Satan influencing the individual. The Bible records in Ephesians 6 that we don't wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Why is it that we get all bent out of shape when people come against us? Why is it that we get mad at the person? Why is it that when we, when we are mistreated, we wallow in the bed for days, depressed and, and broken? Could it be that we don't recognize the enemy? But Nina was her adversary. She picked on her, but she was influenced by the enemy. We need to understand today, amen, when we begin to feel like everybody in the world hates us, we feel like nobody loves us. Us. Listen, we start asking ourselves, why me? Why are they treating me like this? We need to be able to recognize the enemy. And we need to understand that we don't need to blame ourselves for somebody else's wrong behavior. Hannah had a problem. She had an issue. Uh, she found herself in a situation that wasn't fair. She was childless and she desired to give her husband a child while her adversary had what she desired. Anybody ever been like Hannah and your adversary has what you desire? The Bible tells us not to be envious of what other people have, uh, but we have to understand the difference between envy and motivation. Envy is a feeling of discontentment or resentment, longing, ar a resentful longing aroused by someone else's possessions, qualities, or what the dictionary calls luck. Anybody in the body of Christ know we don't believe in luck, we believe in blessings. Envy is a desire to have a quality, possession, or other desirable attribute belonging to someone else. There are times when we can envy what someone else has to the degree that it bothers us to see them blessed, then that's when envy becomes jealousy and jealousy becomes rage and rage becomes anguish because you want what somebody else has. But listen, motivation is the reason or reasons one has for acting or behaving in a particular way. Therefore, motivation gives you the energy that you need not to be jealous of what somebody else has, but to do what is necessary to have your own. Can I get somebody to say envy or the difference between envy and motivation this morning? Envy Envy says, I'm so jealous of somebody else, amen, that I can't stand them. But motivation says, I see what they have. I see how they work for it. Now I'm going to do what it takes to have my own. Envy is being jealous because somebody else has the college degree. Motivation is being encouraged or inspired to go out and get your own. The pressure was on for him because she was living in the same house with her adversary, and every day she was reminded of what somebody else had that she couldn't have. Can I help you? Only the devil wants to make you look like a failure. Only the devil wants to remind you of what you don't have. But I need you to be encouraged with what the Bible says, that you can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. So by giving her a double portion of the sacrificial meat, Elkanah was trying to demonstrate his love for his wife by giving her twice as much as his other wife. He showed a little bit of favoritism toward Hannah, and when people see that you favor them over somebody else, it's going to create drama and chaos. But Hannah was secure in her relationship with her husband, but her problem was that Elkanah was not enough. Listen, she desired a child, and she was motivated to go before the Lord in prayer. She was motivated to make a request known to God. She was motivated to pour her heart out to God. Listen, listen, people are quick to lie to you and tell Tell you that if it hasn't happened for you, it would never happen. Your ministry would never prosper. You're going to always be broke. You would never have anything or be anything. People who don't understand your feelings will never understand why you're so desperate for something to happen, why you're so desperate for change, why you're so desperate for more. Hannah's adversary provoked her. Her husband didn't understand her. She was misunderstood. Sometimes we can't get so focused on what we don't have that we can't see what we are. We can get so focused on what we don't have that we don't see that what we have is what we need. Hannah had what she needed in her husband, and she had what she needed in her adversary. Oh, God. She had what she needed in her husband. 
and she had what she needed in her adversary. Listen, because the adversary picking on her forced her and motivated her to rely on God. Her husband couldn't understand, amen, that he wasn't enough. In other words, he didn't quite get it. She was misunderstood. Anybody ever been like Hannah, misunderstood? They don't understand why you can't come around them anymore, misunderstood. They don't understand why you can't entertain the gossip, misunderstood. They don't understand why you worship like you do, why you praise like you do, why you cry out like you do. Somebody say, I've been misunderstood. But even though you have this challenge, even though you've been misunderstood, the Bible says, in Romans 8, I, that all things work together for the good of them who love God, to them who are called according to his purpose. The Bible says in James chapter 1, to count it all joy. The, the, amplified, the message Bible of James 1, 2, and 3 says, consider it a sheer gift when tests and challenges come at you from all sides. You know that under pressure, your faith life is forced into the open and shows its true colors. So don't try to get out of anything prematurely. Let it do its work so you become mature and well-developed, not deficient in any way. The pressure was on for Hannah, but she poured out her heart in prayer. When your marriage is is struggling, that's pressure. When your children are getting in trouble, that's pressure. When the bills are mounting, that's pressure. When the doctor gives a bad report, that's pressure. When your friends talk about to scandalize your name, that's pressure. When your family rejects you, somebody say pressure. It's often during the times of pressure that we are forced to call on the name of the Lord. Sometimes as we need to understand that the hurt helps. When the family went to shallow this time, Hannah sneaked into the tabernacle at night, and the Bible says in bitterness of soul, she prayed to the Lord for a son. She prayed to the Lord, she made a vow to the Lord, and the Lord honored her request. Some of us need to do is just let the, let the hurt cause us to cry and pour our heart out to the Lord. Let that hurt cause you to give it all to Jesus. Come on, somebody. The Bible says, cast all your cares upon the Lord because he cares about you. You can't give up. You might be misunderstood. They might think that you're crazy. They might think that you're drunk. But go ahead and pour your heart out to the Lord. Somebody ought to say, I got to give it to Jesus because he'll make everything all right. Hannah was discouraged. And once again, even the priest, mis- uh, by the priest, he was misunderstood. But she did not let that stop her from pouring her heart out to God. What happened when she gave her problems to God? The child that she desired, the child that she learned for, yearned for, the child that she eventually asked what was given to her by God. That thing that you're trying to do on your own will only happen when you give it to God. The relationship that you desire, the one you're trying to make happen on your own, is going to, only going to happen when you give it to God. Listen, she poured her heart out to God and she realized it because of that relationship, even though people misunderstood, we need to know that God understands. He knows our every weakness. He knows what we go through. Pour your heart out to God today and give that issue to Jesus. When the hurt helps, we, we were rejected by people. We have to remember that the Lord will never leave you nor forsake you. The hurt helps when the doctor says no, and you remember the Bible says you're healed by the stripes of Jesus. The hurt helps when they tell you that you can't do anything, but you remember that you can do all things through Christ who gives you strength. The hurt helps when they tell you you are nobody, and you remember that you are fearfully and wonderfully made. When the hurt helps, you are determined, motivated to give your issues and your troubles to God. This is Evangelist Renee Sellers, the Upper Room Outreach Ministries, Wake Cross, Georgia. Enjoy your weekend on this Faith in It Friday. When the hurt helps, it motivates you to give it to God. God bless you. Come on, y'all. Join Evangelist.